religioso, soy homosexual y a la vez soy anticastrista. Eso quiere decir que yo creo que reúno todas las condiciones para que no se me publique nunca un libro y para vivir al margen de toda sociedad en cualquier lugar del mundo. Julian Snobble's second film, Before Night Falls, chronicles the life of the late poet and novelist Rinaldo Arenas. It is based on the Cuban writer's 1993 memoir of the same name. The film explores the effect of Castro's Cuba and the determination of one artist under the persecution of a totalitarian regime. Here is the trailer from the film. Julian Snobel is here. Also, actor Javier Bardem, who stars in the film as Ronaldo Arenas. I am very pleased to have both of them here to talk about this film. Just listen to this. Awards, 2000 Venice International Film Festival, Grand Jury Prize, 2000 Venice International Film Festival, Best Actor, 2000 National Board of Review, Best Actor, 2001 National Society of Film Critics, Best Actor, <laughs> Southeastern, Southeastern Film Critics, Best Actor. Am I missing anything, Julian? Uh, he was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actor. Nominated he is. Nominated for Best Actor. Nominated act for, yes. for Best Actor, Golden Globe. Yes, and uh, we're nominated for uh, Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Director, and Best uh, Cinematography. Best Director? Yeah, for, uh, for uh, the Independent Spirit Awards. Oh, wow. Uh, it, is this brilliant performance to get all these nominations because you're just naturally a gifted actor, or was it because this was such brilliant directing in oh, this case? I, I guess, well, uh, first of all, he's a great director and a great human being, which is much important, I guess. Yeah. But I think it's the role in itself. Uh, you need a, an actor to play that role, but if the role is like Renal Lorena's, it's easy to do it, I yeah. guess. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm now, you were a big star in Spain. When when he came to you to do this, I mean, was it something you leapt at? Did you say yes because... Well, first I refused. <laughs> yes, uh, first he offered me the role of uh, Lázaro, who's played by Olivier Martinez, and, and I liked it. But two weeks later, he called me at 3 o'clock in the morning or whatever, uh, near, uh, I mean, Spanish time. <laughs> and he offered me Rinaldo Arena's role, and I refused because I thought it was too big for me. I mean, uh, too many things uh, difficult for me. Language, Cuban accent. And doing, and the most difficult of all, uh, doing a person who really existed, and that's yeah. I, I haven't done that before. So mm. it's another way of approaching a, a role. So in fact, he didn't do it. <laughs> well, <then> we're not <laughs> here. <laughs> Tell me why you saw him, Renal Arenas, in in a documentary. Yes, a woman named Yana Bokova made a documentary on Havana, and Reynaldo appeared. He was already in Miami by this time, and he said. Uh, in Eng I guess I'll speak in English. No, he said, for, my, for the moment, my name is Reynaldo Arenas. Um, the, the Justice Department has uh, declared me stateless, so legally I don't exist. Uh, I live on the margin of society anywhere in the world. I'm homosexual, anti-Castro, and I'm not religious, so I have all the qualities of never publishing a single novel. <laughs> and uh, I thought he was very, very funny. And then there was some fragments of a prose poem, The Parade Begins and The Parade Ends. Right. And it seemed to me, you know, Ronaldo was born in 1943, and The Parade Begins is really a hymn to the optimism of the revolution. And 20 years later, when he finished it, he wrote uh, The Parade Ends, where everything is closed. And the only uh, thing that, uh, according to the incessant tap tap of his typewriter, he was saved, honored, immortalized. And uh, I thought that it was his life was kind of a microcosm for the whole revolution. So telling his story was like. Before you saw that, what did you know about him? I mean, you're a uh, man of culture and the arts. Um, I didn't know anything about him. Nothing. No. You were just mesmerized by what you saw in that documentary. Yeah. Yeah. This man appeared, and 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 his part of his poems were in there, and so yeah. uh, I was so touched by what he had to say. It just seemed like. Yeah, but that's a long way from deciding to make a movie. I mean, and, and you've been looking for a subject, or...? I or wasn't looking for a subject. As a matter of fact, first of all, I didn't want to make the movie about Jean-Michel in the first place. Right. And it was sort of a, a rescue mission, in a sense, to do it, because I felt like it wasn't going to get done the right way. And I definitely didn't have a plan to do this, and I wasn't even done with the other film. I was in Florida, and a, um, a Cuban friend saw this, and she knew me. I, she was a real estate person. Right. and. 
I looked at some hotels that I never bought. But I had a friend. I made a friend there, and she showed me this tape. And uh, I thought I'd never get the rights because in 1993, Ronaldo Renas was on the cover of the New York Times book review for yeah. one of the ten best books of 1993. It was all he was already dead for three yeah, three years. years right. Committed uh, suicide in what Florida in 1990? No, no, in New York. In New York, I mean, right, right. And um, I contacted. Well, I never thought I'd get the rights, and I contacted Tom Colchi, who was his agent. And he, uh, and this was uh, took years to kind of put together. And then Basquiat was already completed, and I showed the movie. This friend of mine, Arthur Cohn, who works uh, at Paramount, let me use the Viacom screening room to show the movie to Lassero and to these friends of Ronaldo's. And I was embarrassed that there was like velvet seats in the room, like I was trying to co-opt them in some way and take this precious thing from Lassero, who worked as, uh, I guess he worked seven days a week, 12 hours a day for four and a half years, uh, baking bread and delivering it, rather than yeah. give up the rights to this book that he was guarding. And uh, so I, they saw it, disappeared for a while. I, I called Lasso, he never called back. And one day, he returned my call and he came to my studio. And uh, uh, he said, you can have the rights. And I said, why? Have the rights. Why? Why are you going to give me the rights? And he said, turn to page 312 in the book. So I pull out the book, the English version, I turn to page 312, and Ronaldo wrote, I dreamed I was a painter. I had this gigantic studio with these massive paintings around, and inside the room are people, paintings of people close to me immersed in blue. Well, I had just, there were a bunch of 15-foot square paintings around, and I had done these portraits of my wife and my son with this resin on them that were immersed in blue. And then he said, Lostro enters the room, jumps out of the window, I run down from my apartment, and I'm on Holguin on October 10th Street, and I look at his beautiful muddy face, and my grandmother screams, oh, why? And I realize that it's not Lasro that's dead, it's me because it's my family that is around him. Mm. And basically, Ronaldo wrote me into the script. What's this film about? Uh, it, it's against intolerance. Uh, it is about freedom. It's about that one man or one person uh, being uh, true to their inner voice could actually change something. What was the most compelling thing for, about him for you? I mean, mm -hmm. You're the one who has to get inside of him. Uh, well, was it freedom? Freedom, and I guess, I guess it was sense of humor, yes, in order to survive all the things that he had to pass through. Uh, sense of humor and also sexual freedom, which is something that we are not very used to. Because I always say that Cuban people, they don't have the guilt in the hips. They don't, have, they don't, have, they don't, they don't feel the guilt in the hips. Yeah, in the hips, <laughs> yeah, right, right. And that's something, me as a Spanish person who went to Havana for three weeks and talked with these people, it's something that really shocked, shocked me a lot. I mean, the way they, they live uh, their freedom, their sexuality. Mm. And it's something very uh, very specific from, from Reynaldo Reynas. Obviously, uh, this film has not been seen in, Flor in, in Cuba. Has anybody in Cuba commented on it? Um, well, actually, it hasn't been shown in Cuba uh, in a cinema, but uh, Cubans that go uh, other places uh, Actually, Cubans who travel to the United States, or or go to say we showed the movie London. in the Toronto Film Festival or San Sebastian, uh, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, they're Cubans that have seen the movie in all these different places. So uh, we showed the movie to 1,500 Miamians, mostly Cubans, right. in in Cuban Miami, exiles. and uh, we also uh, I think probably they're tapes that have sort of uh, like made their way sure, somehow sure, sure. over Blue there. Uh, but uh But, so what's the question? Uh, whether anybody in Cuba who had, who had seen it, had it made its way to Cuba in any way, yes. obviously it's not going to be shown and displayed in theaters there. Well, actually, you know, I asked, uh, I asked a couple of people. I mean, I've been to Cuba quite a few yeah. times, and uh, I asked some people. Uh, uh, the people from the U.S. intersection asked me if I wanted to show the movie there, and I didn't want to. I want to show the movie to the people of Cuba, not in some kind of selected yeah. uh, venue. And so uh, I wanted to ask first, and uh, I, I think that the Cuban people should see what is part of their own history. Because, of course, you know, Fidel Castro 
runs the airwaves and the newspaper, whatever. And I think a lot of people don't know that there were UMAP camps, I mean, concentration camps in the 60s, uh, set up to put homosexuals in. Mm -hmm. right. he, uh, he wrote his memoir. The film is based on his memoir. Yeah. It's an accumulation of not just, it's not an, an illustration of that book. Uh, it's an accumulation of uh, the hallucinations, uh, um, the color of summer, uh, other books and stories that his friend Lassero told me. I called it Before Nightfalls because I want people to buy his book. And actually, they've redistributed his book, and I've been going around signing Rinaldo Arenas books. I'll do anything for, to make somebody read a Rinaldo Arenas yeah. book. So uh, they've redistributed his books in the United States, and they're doing it worldwide. Yeah. Is, is this a case where the more deeper you get involved in his life, the more you appreciate him? Well, I'm so deep in his life that Lostro actually now works with me all of the time, and I feel like a Cuban exile. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a sense of... But I, what's your question again, no, Julian? <laughs> I, mean, I can't help myself. I'm just a little insane. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not news. Uh, <laughs> the question was, uh, do, you get, uh, I, do you get more involved with him? I mean, do you appreciate him more? Do you? I'm so involved with him, I can't think about any thing else. You know, right. there's no separation between art and life, in yeah. my life, yeah. and there's no separation between me and Ronaldo. Really? And so, uh, uh, I guess I'm fighting a lot of his battles. I mean, one thing that I find very, very satisfying is that people that did come across in the Mariel Harbor exodus, or yeah. people like Caridad Martinez, who was a prima ball ballerina who left with her old troupe that lives in Mexico and yeah. teaches, uh, like, bourgeois kids in Veracruz ballet yeah. uh, is dancing on the table in the convent de Santa Clara, or Melanio uh, Filiberto Ebra, who uh, was my consultant, who came across in the Merrill Harbor exodus. It's a way for people to identify what they went through and help other people kind of adjust to that, people that have been ripped from their roots in a way had to start over. I mean, uh, at one time when I was showing this movie to uh, one of the distributors, uh, they said, well, it would be great if the movie just ended when he arrives in New York and the snow is coming down. I said, yeah, but that's like not what happened to these people. I mean, it's a happy ending and it's maybe a nice place, but I think life in exile is so much a part of uh, the complete understanding of who Ronaldo was. Here's a clip in which uh, Lieutenant uh, Victor questions Ronaldo about his book, which has been published in France. Lieutenant uh, played Victor by is Johnny played Depp, by right? Johnny Depp. Yes. This book was published in France without permission of the Writers' Union. Therefore, you must have had someone to smuggle it out. You didn't go to France, did you? Wow. He, why did he continue to write? He couldn't help himself. He couldn't stop. I mean, uh, one other line that Johnny gives is, is there's no uh, rehabil rehabilitating a faggot. And, I mean, I think that uh, he could not stop being homosexual in the same way that he couldn't stop writing. And the fact that there was a combination of the two was his glory and his demise. And I think uh, uh, his life would have been much easier if he would have just said, okay, I'll stop. Yeah. and I'll just be like everybody else. But he didn't do that. Now, he won. Uh, he was educated by the revolution, won a National Book Award when he was 20. And then he realized that freedom wasn't for everybody in his country, and certainly not homosexuals. And he wrote, and his books were not political essays. This was just a novelist and a, and a, poet, and a poet. And uh, so when he was included into the, uh, the, the clique of Jose Lasama Lima and Virgilio Pineda, right. who were also homosexuals, but were also the greatest literary giants of the time, he was damned immediately, and the state security was on him. And uh, his second book, he smuggled out of uh, Cuba, and he became a stranger in his own country, and his prize was uh, two years in El Moro prison. Mm. How did you prepare for this, Javier? First of all, I pray. Yeah. <laughs> and then Sagan I, I went right to again? <laughs> right again and Sagan and said, no, wait, no, let me get out of here. No, I went to Cuba for three weeks and I, I spoke with people that knew Reynaldo and for me it was... With your passport you can go... Yeah. I didn't know who Reynaldo Reynas was in the first time so I came to New York to talk with Julian. He, he showed me some video footage 
I read some books, and then I saw a picture of him, and I was very shocked because we have the same broken nose. Yeah. And I thought because I didn't know him before, he was going to be a weak person, you know, uh, some kind of. That's uh, fine. Yeah. Uh, and he looked like a boxer, I mean, yeah. like me. So uh, that really helped me to have a decision. You know? And then I went to Cuba. That helped you. Yeah. Helped me, yeah. yeah. And felt more confident you could do it because you had yes. this sort of you go into it with this physical kind of yes. similarity. And then after that, I went to Cuba. I spoke with people that uh, they are still living there and happen. Um, it happened the same to them. And came back to New York and studied English. <laughs> well, he with started Cuban actually and lived with a Cuban person in New York City, and mm -hmm. he sort of really um, he lost forty pounds. Yeah. And I also, I mean, Lazaro, who's who's working in Julian's right, studio, right, he right. helped me a lot. I mean, he he he, he he's his friend. best friend. Yes, and yeah. I was asking him on and on a lot of questions and give my video camera just to to record me. I mean, just to see the movements or the way he talked, and he helped me a lot. This movie has gotten lots of attention. Uh, Julian's novel is a director. Javier Bardem has gotten a lot of attention, not only uh, from those people who are who are at the time of year to to uh, to give out awards, but simply because it is a a, a sensational performance. And uh, I know Julian feels strongly that when you have taken it on yourself to tell a story that you so believe in and that has such meaning to you, and because the themes are important in terms of freedom and in terms of, of uh, art and in terms of living with pain and all of that uh, and the sacrifices you have to make, uh, his passion is in this and so is his craft and therefore um, this is a movie that people are talking about and and uh, I'm pleased to have Julian Schnabel here, Javier Bardem, to talk about this movie. It opened on December 22nd, as I said, it's won a number of awards before night falls. My thanks to Julian Schnabel, my thanks to Javier Bardem. Real pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.